Tonight on To The Point, more funding for homelessness programs, even after an audit slammed the state spending on the issue. It strikes us as throwing more gasoline on the fire. How the governor plans to better track the spending, plus cracking down on crime. People can go into stores and steal up to $950 with practically no consequences. The initiative you could see on your ballot this November targeting shoplifters and fentanyl dealers. An internet outage delays flights out of Sacramento. Why it's now being investigated as vandalism and trouble in local vineyards. Why acres of wine grapes are being ripped up. Thank you for joining us on To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. The state is not good at tracking the outcomes of the money it spends on homelessness. That was the big takeaway from a new audit that we just told you about last week. It found California spent about $24 billion on homelessness and housing over the past five years with a growing homeless population to show for it. Now today, the governor announced the state is giving almost $200 million more million to homelessness programs. Why and what is the state doing better to keep track of all these dollars? Becca Hobbegger has the story tonight. People are dying on our watch. People are dying on the streets. And we all have a responsibility to do better. Governor Gavin Newsom got fired up at a virtual news conference on Thursday. I care about this state. I care about our reputation. I care that people can't afford to live here, can't afford to raise their family here. I care that people visit here and go, what the hell's going on with the encampments and what's going on on the streets and sidewalks? I got three more years. We've raised our game in this state. He announced 17 local governments will be getting a total of about $192 million in the latest round of grants from something called the Encampment Resolution Fund. Only one is in our area. Nevada County is getting $2.5 million to serve 150 people and house 70 from its densest encampment. People want to see these tents and encampments removed, but they want to see them removed in a compassionate and thoughtful way. Thursday's announcement came just nine days after the California State Auditor released a report with mixed and concerning results. The state funds more than 30 programs that tackle homelessness. The report focused on five of them, two of which are likely cost-effective, the audit found, Project Home Key, which turns hotel and motel rooms into housing, and the CalWORKs Housing Support Program. For the other three, though, the state lacks clear data, the report found. The auditor said the state does not have a consistent method for gathering information on the costs and outcomes for individual programs. And one of the programs with unclear outcomes is the one doling out these new grants, the Encampment Resolution Fund. It strikes us as throwing more gasoline on the fire. John Kupal is president of the Howard Jarvis Tax Payers Association. He's concerned about spending more money in light of last week's report. As the audit makes clear, the money is not being well spent and and is not being tracked to the level it needs to be to determine whether or not these programs are having their intended impact. Not surprisingly, most reporters at Thursday's news conference asked the governor about the audit and how he plans on tracking the outcomes of this latest round of grant funding. The Cameron Resolution grants are, are the manifestation uh, of accountability because they require specific prescriptive outcomes. The local governments applying for this grant had to be specific. Altogether, the projects funded by these grants are set to provide services to some 3,600 people and permanent housing for nearly 2,200 of them. We will not approve an application without stress testing that those programs are set up and all they're missing now is resources to actually produce the results. So that's what's okay. fundamentally different in this program. All right, and Becca Hoppaker's with us right now. Becca, we know that the governor announced a new layer of accountability, right? Yeah, Alex, if continued funding is the carrot, Governor Newsom laid out plans for a new stick. So venture with me into the weeds for a second here. <laughs> Cities and counties have something called RENA numbers. RENA, that's the Regional Housing Needs Allocation Process. It decides how many units of housing any given community needs at various income levels, ranging from very low to above moderate. Now, a community's failure to comply with the process can result in action from the state, AG, and even fines. And Alex, here's where today's news comes in. The governor says he'll be adding to that process requirements for communities to have a certain amount of homelessness housing. So, in other words, the very lowest income housing for people transitioning off the streets. Yeah, and we know this is an important topic, so we'll continue to watch if the state can actually improve its accountability with what they're doing with our uh, taxpayer dollars. So thank right. you so much, Becca.
All right, to our next story. A statewide ballot initiative to increase penalties for shoplifting and drug dealing has collected enough signatures to be considered for the November ballot. The measure calls on rolling back parts of Prop 47. Shoplifters would be charged with a felony regardless of the amount stolen if they have at least two prior theft convictions. It also would create a new drug court treatment program for those with multiple drug possession convictions. We don't believe in massive incarceration, but at the end of the day, something has got to be done because as community residents living in our cities, the chamber protecting our businesses, we need this level of support. County and state officials must now verify the signatures before the measure is officially placed on the ballot. The city is growing and building. That's the message from Stockton's mayor during his annual State of the City address this afternoon. More than 900 people gathered at the event at the Port of Stockton. The address was put on by the Greater Stockton Chamber of Commerce. ABC 10 helped sponsor this event. And during his nearly 34-minute long speech, Mayor Kevin Lincoln addressed progress on issues such as homelessness and housing, public safety, community well-being, youth programming, and economic development. While the address didn't include any new initiatives, or announcements, the mayor said that there is plenty to celebrate in the port city. We are breaking down walls of division and building bridges of trust all throughout this community, giving new meaning to the words public, private, and nonprofit partnerships. We are growing, we are building, and we are one Stockton. Now, this was Mayor Lincoln's final state of the city address. He is running for Congress against incumbent Josh Harder. Educator Christina Fugazi and County Supervisor Tom Patty are running to take Lincoln's seat in the November uh, election. Both were at today's event. Tonight, an internet outage at the Sacramento International Airport is under investigation. Nearly 100 flights were delayed because of this after internet and phone lines were cut. Our Roxana Leah says more on what's being called an act of vandalism. Alex, travelers had to deal with a big headache this morning as they slowly started to find out that their flights were delayed here for 30 minutes or more because of an outage with AT&T. But what's more concerning to them is that someone out there actually caused this. It was a rude awakening for Delta and Southwest passengers trying to fly out of Sacramento International Airport Thursday morning. A couple of friends and family started calling and telling us, did you check your uh, flight? Is it delayed? I got a notice on my Southwest app that my flight was delayed earlier, very early this morning. We got here when the line was wrapped all the way around the building. Those delays caused by an internet outage. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office now investigating the incident as vandalism after someone physically cut the internet and phone lines. Sure, so at about 1.30 this morning, uh, there was a service disruption from AT&T regarding internet and phone communication to the airport. Uh, from there, they sent out work crews and we were alerted by the airport and work crew personnel that it looked like it was an actual deliberate act, so that's where we got involved. Investigators are focused on what led up to it and who's responsible. At the airport, a few eyebrows were raised as we let travelers know what caused the outage. Now, I'm afraid it's going to continue happening if they don't figure out how to, you know, stop that. It could be very disruptive to business, you know, trying people trying to travel. We need our airlines to be dependable and reliable. The sheriff's office is also working with the FBI, which is looking at any other implications. So there are cameras all over this place that have caught all kinds of things. So um, again, we've got a lot of leads to be able to work through, uh, so, which are promising right now. Chris Ford says the unpleasant experience has left him questioning if he'll fly into Sacramento again. You know, enjoy coming here, but uh, the, the flights kind of makes me think twice maybe about coming here, you know, with that kind of risk. So. The outage was restored before noon today, but the check-in process was impacted for hours. Earlier today, some of the travelers we talked to say they even missed their flights. The airport says that the best advice now for other travelers is to call your airline. Alex, back to you in studio. All right, Roxanne, thank you. We have developing news in Stockton. Officials are looking for a suspect in a deadly robbery at a gas station. It happened just before two this morning off Arch Road along 99 Frontage Road. And police say a group of people robbed the gas station. A fight broke out 
and shots were fired. A 50 year old employee at the store was killed. Tonight, the shooter is on the run, and investigators are looking for witnesses and surveillance videos. So if you have any information, make sure that you contact police. Still ahead on to the point local vineyards are in trouble. Why acres of vines are being ripped up. And temperatures have been in the low 80s, continuing through the low 80s through the weekend. But the next week, I've got 60s and 70s. Details after the break. Trump is on trial. The judge telling the court today, we now have our jury. What this means for the case, plus a new report on the Maui wildfires and concerns over emergency alerts. All right, let's get a look at our forecast with me with uh, meteorologist Brendan Benchef. Excuse me. We've kind of had a mixed bag of weather here. I don't really sure. know how to dress yeah. some days. I'm like, am I wearing a sweatshirt? Yeah. Am I wearing shorts? Sounds like spring. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've had cold days. We've had warm days. Today certainly falls in the warm category. High temperature 84 downtown Sacramento. But as you take a look at the calendar uh, again, it is a mixed bag. Seven days below average, nine days above average and two days right at average. So again, 84 was the high today. Last Thursday, we we're 86. But then just last Saturday, the high temperature 59. But we hit that overnight, like around midnight while most of us were asleep. The actual temperatures last Saturday afternoon were in the middle 40. So it was quite cold this past weekend. We're nearly 40 degrees warmer today. 81 right now in Sacramento, 79 in Elk Grove, 79 Stockton, 79 in Modesto for current temperatures. If you're waking up early on Friday morning, it will be in the low to middle 50s. We're going to have some passing clouds overnight. Clouds act as a blanket. Don't let all that heat escape uh, that we saw during the day. So it keeps us a couple degrees warmer. We'll say two to four degrees warmer than where we'd be if we didn't have the clouds overhead. But still, nonetheless, a mild start to the day on Friday, followed by a warm afternoon tomorrow. 81 Sacramento, 81 in Elk Grove, 82 Stockton on Friday afternoon, 81 Modesto, 76 in Jackson and Angels Camp, 73 Placerville, 76 in Auburn, 65 in Truckee, and 61 in South Lake Tahoe. Finally, we get a nice weather weekend as well. No real weather issues to speak of. 80 on Saturday, 82 on Sunday for high temperatures. Warm and above average conditions continue through the weekend. As we look ahead to next week, though, the weekend is nice because high pressure starts to build in. But by the time we get to the middle part of this coming week, we get a low pressure system that moves on through. Could bring us some showers to different parts of Northern California. Uh, it will certainly bring us cooler temperatures, highs in the middle of next week, upper 60s and low 70s. Out. All right, Brendan, thank you. Next on to the point, trouble with California's wine grapes. What's causing local vineyards to rip up their vines? Plus new developments in court as a judge picks the 12 jurors in Trump's hush money trial. They're essential to California's economy. Wine grapes are one of our highest grossing commodities, but right now there's trouble in the market. It's causing local vineyards to tear out acres of vines. ABC 10's Gabriel Porras has the story. Dark clouds loom over this year's grape growing season at JW Moore Vineyards in Lodi. We're throwing money on the ground. Operations manager Garrett Schaefer has been in the industry for 13 years. He says this is a tough but familiar decision. What used to be here on this, uh, this field? Uh, so this was 10 acres of uh, Cabernet grapes, actually. In the last couple of seasons, currently we're up to 50 acres that have come out of the ground and we're possibly going to pull another 15 out. Leaving behind just dirt and mangled metal stakes on fallowed land on this 130-year-old vineyard. The farmer wears a lot of hats these days. Right now we're bringing in a lot of wine from other countries cheaper than we can farm the grapes. And so it makes it really tough to compete with those type of prices. Garrett also says increasing government regulations like requiring sustainable certifications are keeping production costs high while grape prices haven't increased in decades. Now we're dealing with like air quality issues with the Air Resources Board. When we do pull out a vineyard, you're no longer allowed to open air burn. So that price has increased, you know, three times. And some wineries Garrett sells to require new laborious methods of growing. What the winery wants is they want us to take all these shoots off, which includes the grapes with it. And then they want you to shoot then back to like two to three shoots per, this is called a spur. So we're reducing the, the number of shoots for quality. I always say we're, we're spending money to lose money. Every time you do this, you're basically throwing a, a potential bunch of grapes on the ground. 
And it's not just Garrett's Vineyard struggling. Scenes like this with vines completely ripped out of the ground are becoming hard to miss when driving around Lodi. This is going to be a challenging year for both growers and vintners. The Lodi Wine Grape Commission represents nearly 750 wine grape growers in the region. Farming about 90,000 acres of grapes. It's over 20% of California's wine production. Stuart Spencer, the commission's executive director, says an estimated 7,000 acres of local vines have been pulled out so far this year. For those of us that have been in the business a long time, we've seen all sorts of down cycles and we've seen all sorts of up cycles. This one is particularly challenging. And statewide, there are now 15,000 fewer acres of wine grapes than before the pandemic. Stewart, like Garrett, says it's due to cheap foreign wine. He estimates that as many as 400,000 tons of California's grapes were left on the vine last harvest, while that same number was imported into the state. That's undercutting the California growers here and keeping the price and demand down for Lodi and California grown grapes. There's lots of other industries that benefit from the success and growth of California wine, and they are all going to be struggling as we struggle too. That's why he encourages wine drinkers to read the fine print. It says Chardonnay, but when you look very carefully at the, at the packaging, it says American Chardonnay, and that can include 25% Chilean or Australian Chardonnay. Back on Garrett's family-owned vineyard. It's very peaceful, it's very relaxing. He's hoping you'll pick the local bottle too to keep cultivating tradition. I've always said some of the best ideas and thinking that I've ever done is on a tractor as I'm driving through the field. I hope that the family can keep doing this for another 100 years. And despite all this uncertainty, Lodi farmers are still trying to adapt and even grow different types of grapes. So if you want to help out your local vineyard, go visit them and have a glass of their local wine. All right, tonight a new report is revealing what happened during the deadly Maui wildfires last August. The head of Maui's emergency management agency reportedly dragged his heels about returning to the island and a communications breakdown left first responders in the dark and did not get uh, they did not get emergency alerts. There were also communication problems with the Hawaiian Electric Company. Officials were unable to confirm that power lines were de-energized until well after the widespread damage. At least 101 people were killed. It's become the deadliest wildfire in modern U.S. history. Former President Donald Trump was back in a New York City courtroom today for the third day of jury selection in his historic criminal trial. Two jurors who were seated earlier this week have now been excused. So here's the latest from the courtroom tonight. Twelve jurors now seated in the historic criminal trial of former President Donald Trump. Six alternates will also be needed before opening statements. Today, two jurors who had been seated earlier this week were excused. Juror number two saying after sleeping on it overnight, she had concerns about serving on the case. After questioning, she was sent home. Juror number four also dismissed after prosecutors determined he had been arrested for ripping down right-leaning political posters in the 90s. The judge asking jurors that have been seated to show up on Monday for possible opening statements. The prospective jurors in court going through a seven-page questionnaire that asks things like whether they've been to a political rally for or against Trump and whether they have strong views about him that would prevent them from being fair and impartial jurors. About half the pool immediately dismissed, saying they were unable to be unbiased. One prospective juror who was excused speaking out. You're not here to say, oh, I hate this guy or oh, I like this guy. Your job is to say, all right, I understand what the law is. This is the evidence of his behavior. Is he or is he not guilty of committing these acts? Trump is facing felony charges related to a 2016 hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels in order to allegedly cover up an affair with her. He denied that affair and pleaded not guilty to a 34 count indictment charging him with falsifying business records. But all of these are stories from legal experts saying how this is not a case. And prosecutors are also asking the judge to hold Trump in contempt, bringing up what they say are more gag order violations. A hearing on that is scheduled for next week. And next on to the point, the Sacramento Kings preparing for their play in matchup with the Pelicans, what the game could mean for the future of the season.
The Sacramento Kings are one step closer to the playoffs tomorrow. The team will take on the Pelicans in New Orleans. And Sacramento, they have played them five times this season, and they have lost all of the games. But some King fans are hopeful because the Pelicans will be without star player Zion Williamson tomorrow. The Pelicans defeated the Kings by 33 points this season without Zion. And if the Kings win, they start a best-of-seven series against Oklahoma City on Sunday, but if they lose, then they are done for the season. And I also want to mention that our Kevin John and Matt George are in New Orleans, and we'll have more on the game tomorrow night right here onto the point, so make sure you don't miss it. And that is our show tonight. Thank you so much for making us a little bit of your day. We love telling your stories, and we love getting to meet you. So if you have something you think we should be reach looking into, make sure you reach out to me and the team. Remember, strangers are people we just haven't gotten a chance to meet yet. So take the time to get to know someone. Have a great night, and I will see you later. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the To The Point team and I love hearing from you and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.